Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us look at the next type of asexual reproduction that is budding. Now in budding, the, bu the term budding is derived from the word bud. What is bud? The I mean the smallest form of the flower I and mean, flower arises from the bud, right? So bud represents the beginning of something. So here the new individual is formed as an outgrowth of the parent. So on the parent body itself there is a small outgrowth which is which appears like a bud and that small outgrowth later develops and grows into a new individual and then separates out from the parent's body. So here the daughter separates away and parent continues to exist. So this small outgrowth is known as the bud. So where does it take place? It occurs in organisms like hydra and yeast. So this is how it takes place. This is the structure of hydra. So you see a small outgrowth here and this small outgrowth is called bud. Now this outgrowth gradually develops and it grows to a new individual and then it breaks off from here. So what happens? This was the parent and this is now the daughter. So here the parent continues to exist and the daughter also is formed. So this bud is seen at a specific site. I mean it just cannot be present anywhere. It is seen at some specific sites and how is this bud formed? The bud is formed as a result of repeated cell divisions which take place at this site. So repeated cell division what will happen when more cell division will take place the number of cells will increase at this site when number of cells increases what will happen some additional growth will take place and the growth happens here in the form of this bud so the buds are basically the small individuals which gradually grow mature and when they are all matured and grown up they detach from the parent body so budding occurs most, it is very common in hydra and yeast. So here you can see how budding occurs in yeast. In yeast also you see an outgrowth here and this outgrowth will later develop, grow and then finally get detached. So here you see they have got detached. So that is how it takes place in yeast. Now budding also occurs in sponges, the porifers. But there, there are two types of budding that takes place. One is the internal budding and the other one is external budding. So in sponges so when we talk about sponges their budding is of two types one is internal budding and the other one is external budding so what happens in external budding external budding is similar to what happens in hydra and East. That is there, is there is an outgrowth on the outside of the body. So that is why that is called external budding. Now what do we mean by internal budding? Now in internal budding small structures called gemmules are formed inside the organism. So here you see these structures are called gemmules. So small structures like this called gemmules are formed inside the body and each of these gemmules are capable of giving rise to a new organism and these gemmules are then released from inside and finally give rise to new sponges. So this is internal and that is external. So budding is very common in hydra yeast and also in polyphores or sponges. Let us look at the next one that is fragmentation. The word fragmentation is derived from fragment. So it means that the parent is going to get divided into fragments or pieces. So let us see what happens here. So here the parent breaks into multiple pieces on maturity, each of which gives rise to a new individual. Now the parent by itself, like in fission what was happening that the parent was getting split into multiple halves. Here the parents will break it is not splitting. When, when we talk about splitting, it gets split in such a way that the new organism gets all portion of its parts. But when we talk about fragmentation, it is like cutting it into different pieces from anywhere. And each of these pieces will then give rise to the new individual. It gives rise to a new individual altogether. 
and this breaking of the parent happen on its own. So nobody externally breaks the parent. So the parent itself breaks on its own as soon as it gets, it becomes mature. So each piece is known as a fragment and that is why this process is called fragmentation. Now this process is not possible for all multicellular organisms and it is seen in only simple multicellular organisms like the green algae, say spirogyra. So that is where we generally find this fragmentation. So what happens is, let us suppose this is the parent organism, this is the spirogyra. So what will happen here, this spirogyra when it becomes mature, it gets split into three halves. So if you see these are the three halves of the spirogyra and each of these halves will gradually give rise to a new individual. So here you see this was the first portion, the first portion gradually gave rise to the entire organism, the middle portion also gave rise to the entire organism and the lower portion also gave rise to the entire organism. Now, the, why is it not possible for complex multicellular organisms? That is because complex multicellular animals are not just collection of cells. Now, there the cells are organized or specialized to form specific tissues which perform specific functions and those tissues form organs and the organs form organ system. So, cell by cell division is not possible in case of multicellular organisms. So complex and advanced modes of reproduction are there for complex animals. But in this case, it, if you see, there is not much of complexity in the body design. So even though it is multicellular, it is quite simple structure-wise because you do not have... Now, example, in case of human beings, the top portion of our body, the head portion, it has got the central nervous system, the brain and all those stuff. So if you just cut the brain of somebody, so that brain will not be able to give rise to all other systems of the body, like the digestive system, the excretory system, etc. But in this case, the organ systems are not that developed. So throughout the body, it is, it is like collection of cells. So cells can give rise to new cells, but cells cannot give rise to cells which are specialized in some other way. So that is difficult. So since it is quite simple in its um, uh, structural organization, so fragmentation is possible here. So spirogyra is one very common example where fragmentation is commonly seen. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.